In today's video, we will fly a localizer back course approach. While not as common as traditional instrument approaches, it is important to learn about the reverse sensing that happens when flying a back course approach. This is the localizer back course approach to runway 13 at McNary Field in Salem, Oregon. The localizer frequency, approach course, runway length and touchdown zone elevation are displayed in the top left of the chart. The needed frequencies for this localizer back course approach are displayed from the left to right and include the ATIS frequency, Seattle Center, Salem Tower, CTAF, Ground Control and Unicom. The missed approach procedure calls for the pilot to climb to 2,400 feet while staying on the southeast localizer course on a heading of 133 to the Lotka waypoint and initiate the holding pattern procedure as shown. See the Lotka waypoint which is 6.9 miles from the Salem localizer and the holding pattern for the missed approach as illustrated. MSA stands for Minimum Safe Altitude. Minimum safe altitudes provide for 1,000 feet of obstacle clearance within a 25 nautical mile radius of the navigation facility. The minimum safe altitude when approaching on a heading between 200 and 320 degrees is 6,300 feet above mean sea level, abbreviated MSL. A pilot approaching on the front course on a heading of 313, which is the 180-degree reciprocal of the back course approach heading of 133, would make a 45-degree turn to the left on a heading of 268 near the initial fix of McCoy to make the 180-degree turn to the final approach course of 133. This is illustrated in the profile view at the bottom of the chart. The minimum descent altitude for the approach is 3,000 feet MSL and the pilot must remain within 10 nautical miles of the ISLE localizer. Two other important points when flying a localizer back course approach. First, the pilot should disregard glide slope indicators when flying the approach because the back course approach will give false glide slope indications. Second, when flying a back course approach, navigation aids such as a CDI needle or HSI will have reverse sensing, meaning the needles will deflect in the same direction as the aircraft and the pilot needs to fly away from the needle as opposed to standard approaches which require the pilot to fly towards the needle. Let's take a look at how reverse sensing works using a CDI needle. The CDI needle is turned to a heading of 133 which is the back course approach for runway 13 at McNary Field in Salem. Notice how the CDI needle deflects to the right when the airplane drifts off course to the right. The pilot would need to fly to the left away from the needle to get back on course. Notice when the plane is to the left of course the needle is deflected to the left and the pilot would need to fly to the right away from the needle to get back on the approach course. Here is another look flying the localizer back course approach into runway 13 at McNary Field in Salem, Oregon. We are flying a Cessna 152 and have tuned to the localizer frequency of 110.3. We have turned the OBS knob on the CDI to the approach course of 133. On this approach, we would be coming in too high and fast and would need to go around. However, we can still see the effects of the reverse sensing on the CDI needle. Notice as we fly to the left of the runway, the CDI needle deflects to the left and we would need to fly back to the right away from the needle to get back on course. In a typical ILS or localizer approach, the opposite would be true. If we flew to the left of course, the needle would deflect to the right and we would need to fly towards the needle. The reverse sensing phenomenon for back course approaches can be confusing for pilots who have never flown a localizer back course approach. Notice as we now drift to the right of the runway, the CDI needle moves to the right. Again, to get back on course, we would need to fly back to the left away from the needle to get back on the glide path. On our next landing approach, we are now on the proper glide path and at the correct approach speed. Our approach speed for this landing is roughly 60 knots. Notice how the CDI needle centers right before touchdown, then does a full-scale deflection to the left. This is because the localizer antennas are located right before the approach end of runway 13. One thing a pilot can do to avoid the reverse sensing on a localizer back course approach is to set the navigational aid to the front course and fly the normal approach. We will use a HSI needle to illustrate. 
since the 180-degree reciprocal for the back course approach heading of 133 is 313, we will tune the HSI knob to the front course heading of 313 as shown. Now just fly the normal approach towards the needle. As the airplane drifts to the left of the course, the needle deflects to the right and we can fly towards the needle to get back on course, as is the case with normal ILS and VOR approaches. When the airplane drifts to the right, the needle deflects to the left and we fly back to the left towards the needle to get back on course. Setting the front course approach heading while on the localizer back course will eliminate the reverse sensing that can often confuse pilots on a back course approach. Thank you for watching this video on how to fly a localizer back course approach. Please like the video and subscribe for more educational videos on aviation and flight training topics.